The NBA trade deadline has come and gone. Busy as always in the association. For more, I'm joined by Chris Mannix. Chris, winners and losers, who you got? I think the big winner at the trade deadline is Minnesota. I mean, their thirst for D'Angelo Russell was real. You know, they have been recruiting him and trying to get him since this past offseason. They finally get a deal done and now have a centerpiece point guard tied to a long-term contract to play alongside Carl Anthony Towns, also tied to a long-term contract. So the big, the rebuilding process is really just beginning in Minnesota, but now you've got two tentpole all-star level players you can build around. I don't think Golden State is a loser in this situation, but I do question why they would make the Russell move at this time. Minnesota was always going to want Russell. They were going to be aggressively after him ne you know, next summer, into next season, whenever. If the Warriors had held on to D'Angelo Russell, you would think that if they wanted with a top five pick, you could turn around and look and say, I've got D'Angelo Russell on a max contract, good contract for a player of that caliber, and a top five pick. Maybe I can look around and maybe get Ben Simmons out of Philadelphia if they fizzle out. Maybe I can have a conversation with the Houston Rockets about James Harden. I think the Warriors just kind of limited their flexibility to make a major move this offseason. Bradley Beal, another player that might be on that list. They limited their ability to make a major move because Andrew Wiggins does not have the same upside as D'Angelo Russell. How about the Clippers and, and the Heat? The Heat obviously going all in, and, and outside of Milwaukee, they, they may be right there in the East, and, and the, the Clippers just get better. I think the Clippers are a winner, but not a huge winner because while Marcus Morris gives them a boost on the perimeter, it doesn't address their rebounding problem right now. They're still a weaker rebounding team when Montreal as Harrell is on the floor. They've got a good big man in Zubac who has been a real fine for them uh, in that front court. Got great chemistry alongside Kawhi Leonard, but they still need that one big guy. I would call the Heat winner lights, right? Like they got Andre Iguodala, which they wanted. Iguodala, I think, is going to be an ideal fit playing alongside Jimmy Butler, take defensive pressure off of him, take defensive pressure off of everybody, maybe some ball handling responsibilities as well. But they couldn't get a deal done for Danilo Gallinari. If they had been able to pull off that you know, double play right there and get Gallinari, adding a 20-point-per-game score into that mix, that would have positioned the Heat as a real threat to Milwaukee in the East. As it stands, I don't think they're there. Yeah, didn't get it done, but you can't say Pat Riley didn't go for it. Pat Riley, Pat Riley's season opening. <laughs> Pat Riley sees that this season... It's wide open. He took a chance. Just couldn't get that second deal done.